What is going on, guys? We are back with some more, not Dokken Battle videos, but we have a kind of discussion here talking about Bandai games in general. Uh, this is actually Goshen's idea, and I have Goshen and the Truth here joining me in this video. So, uh, what's up, guys? What's up, Yo. Goshen? <laughs> what's up, Truth? What's up? <laughs> what's up? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I'm going to have Goshen go into detail as to what this video is because we're going to be diving into specifically talking about rates in certain games and how things have changed in terms of you know anniversaries and you know probably going to mention other games like you know blazing and uh, obviously dokkan legends um so this isn't going to be just a dokkan battle bandai video it's going to be talking about bandai game general so i'm uh, gonna have goshen jumping right now to talk about you know what that is going to be more in detail so uh hop in bro yeah so i honestly i would kind of consider this a, a controversial topic amongst the mobile gaming community because there's a lot of like divisive uh, opinions on this topic and the whole thing is the the issue that at hand is how bandai is messing with rates on banners and making it seem like it's a good banner like they make it appealing to our eyes and we're like oh we need to summon on this banner but then when like we all summon on it not looking at the actual rates and then once we get shafted we're like oh my god why and then we look at the rates and we're like oh well this banner's crap and i just wasted everything so like i i'd like to discuss it with everybody because we all play different mobile games you guys play dokkan legends blazing tokyo ghoul i play saoif i play star ocean a whole bunch of different games different companies too so we can compare and it's just it's good to get a thought process from different people on this type of subject because if it's just one of us then we get a lot of um arguments going in our in our i guess chats you know the people commenting and if it's more people to discuss it in one video, it's a little bit easier to just help help people understand the way that they handle things. So that's that's my thought processing on it. Hmm. I, okay. So if I would start off like with Dokkan, one thing I would say, I feel as though Dokkan has made big strides uh, in this calendar year, really, to improve the game in a lot of ways. Right. A lot of the criticisms or complaints that people have had i think have been shored up a little bit and like if we're talking specifically about rates uh we could look at the fact that there is now a guaranteed ssr uh in the 10th slot of every multi on dokkan which is really nice but the main way it changes things is it is extra bait for people to summon on the lr banners which on the LR banners in Dokkan, those are pretty much the best units in the game, like, across the board. All the summonable LRs are basically better than every other unit in the game. So they make those cards harder to get and thus, you know, make people, you know, spend more, summon more. But even that GSSR mechanic, you know, it, it doesn't help you so much for, like, a main Dokkan Fest card, which has pretty much the same featured rate every time. You know, for a main Dokkan Fest banner, there'll be seven featured ssrs right right so that always has the same chance but the lr banners you know you're dipping into a pool of 200 ssrs and that's where you want to get a needle in a haystack right there so what i think with dokkan it's really they are trying to move people a little bit more from spending on safe banners like dokkan fest where you have a lot of value for the stones you're using and sort of get them a little bit more to summon on the lr banners where it is way more of a gamble there is a big chance that you won't get what you want you know you could even look at you know my recent uh <laughs> struggles with lr goku and frieza taking eight thousand stones to get one copy that's the type of experience you can have off of like a normal dokkan fest banner where I i've never heard of anyone going more than like two thousand on a dokkan fest banner to just get like that specific main card right. i have to ask did you get that last copy i did yeah okay. <laughs> at like eight thousand fifty or something like that I, I was watching the videos and everything and i'm like oh my god dude stop stop it hurts my soul <laughs> at a certain point i couldn't stop until i got him like i just i had to finish you, the you, saga out you reached that point of no return i get it <laughs> but and before we get people in the comments saying oh you guys are doing this video because of truth no we're not actually um, I hit up Muscle first, and then I hit up Truth because I'm like, I want to get these guys together and do this video and talk about this because it's it's really important for us to kind of convey to everybody 
the importance of looking at rates and looking at w the way that they advertise the banners. Because at the same time, like you just said, you summon on an LR banner and they throw astronomical amounts of featured cards on there and it screws with the rates. And not to mention that most of the time that the cards that they throw on there, you don't even want them. Yeah. You know, so it's it's stuff like that. It's like people need to be aware of it before they go, you know, head first into these banners, which a lot of times we do. And granted, I'm, I'm going to say sometimes it's our fault as YouTubers because we hype up the units and get people excited for it, which by all means is not, you know, not really a bad thing. But then when the banner actually shows up, we're like, oh, yeah, this is happening. Hmm. Yeah, it's very important. I think in pretty much any mobile game, like you really got to be sure before you summon and knowing what you're getting into, because the whole design of this free to play sort of market is to get you to sort of waste or use your currency foolishly. So you will then have to buy more. Right. right. Like another game that I play like Legends and then we can sort of spin it off to muscle and, you know, talking about Tokyo Ghoul and stuff. In Legends, it is one of the more free-to-play uh, friendly games I've, I've played before. They give you a good amount of uh, free Chrono Crystals, and you even get guaranteed sparking tickets. But if you're not patient with sort of the free currency and stuff, the rates for Legends is very, very bad. So you have to be very sort of cautious i think especially in playing legends and summoning like just sort of wait for the free sparking stuff and not really chase too hard because the rates just are not going to work with you in that game at all right and yeah I, I i get that and i i did play legends for a while so i do see the free-to-play aspect on it especially with the discounted daily summons on every banner which is i think is fantastic to be honest with yeah. you yeah i think dokkan should implement something like that um now, they certainly could, yeah. You know, now I, I get it that one single in Dokkan is five stones. What could they discount? Well, I mean, they could maybe do a free summon a day, a free single, or like a one stone summon a day, whatever they want to do. I mean, I could see them doing something like that. Uh, yeah, that, that's. I, I think that's very feasible. Yeah, especially considering that even if they do that, they're not really losing a lot of money because you think about it, you, how many Dragon Stones on a non-celebration do they give you for – for doing dailies what like one or two yeah usually like a daily login will get you one yeah so yeah about one or two so pretty much every day so then you could take that one or two and do a, a daily single and people would be happy with that i think that's fair you know otherwise we're saving up for five days to do one single which then in that case we wouldn't even do it because then we would save up for 50 stones to get the guaranteed ssr yeah so that's my thoughts on it. Anyway, you know, let, let's spin it off, like you said, to, to muscle really quick. Let's, you know, talk about Blazing, because I know you have some animosity towards what they're doing there. Uh, I think anyone who plays Blazing has some kind of animosity these days, uh, especially after the uh, second anniversary. Now, I'm a big fan of Blazing, day one player. I love the game. I have a lot of enjoyment with the game. It's actually one of the more free-to-play games that I've ever played. You know, like I've played quite a few Gosha games. I mean, you know, of course, Dokkan Legends, uh, Toka Ghoul uh board trash <laughs> i played quite a few of them but uh in terms of free to play like you know the amount of gems you can grind the amount of gems they give you the amount of free to play units they give you to have options to make free to play teams i think it's great but one thing that has dropped tremendously and i know a lot of people if you know if you follow any uh, blazing youtubers or have been on twitter recently you see a lot of people saying blazing's dying blazing's dead and what i'm seeing now after this anniversary is that they have changed the rates for some reason now uh specifically i'm going to talk about uh the blazing fest banners to just uh give you an example so previously before the anniversary uh typically you would have the brand new featured blazing festival card and with that is accompanied additional blazing fest cards you know for example maybe two or three or four additional units on the banner and that will give you an overall 10 percent rate to pull a featured card um and of course the other you know cards in the uh, banner would be like a five percent rate uh, so the point is that you have the seven step banner and uh, along the way you have a relatively good chance to pull this brand new card along with the additional featured units. Now, what they did after the anniversary, because they dropped this, you know, final ballet Naruto and Sasuke, which is literally seven stars. I mean, they really should have introduced those cards at seven stars because that's exactly what they are. Uh, stupid abilities, stupid stats, you know, busted ability, like everything is still good in those cards. 
Uh, so I understand those cards having literally LR rates because I think to pull those cards, it was like a 0.03% rate. Uh, but those cards are so good that they weren't that low rate. But what they've done now is that they've taken that same concept and literally applied it to every other playing festival card that has been introduced since the anniversary. So they now have these LR rates on normal banners. And it's relatively impossible to pull the brand new card outside of the seven step guarantee. So it makes people who are free to play in the game, grind these pearls, grind these, um, you know, gems, uh, to summon on, it's going to be pretty impossible to get this brand new card if you're not reaching that seven step. Now, once again, I mean, I feel like blazing, you know, they do give you quite a few pearls once again. So that's, that's a good thing, but it's kind of like, you have to now save so many pearls and skip so many bands. You have to be very cautious of what you summon on because the rates have now decreased so much that you're not really going to pull multiple copies of anything. If you don't do at least two or three rotations, which is pretty bad. Now, moving over to Tokyo ghoul. Now, uh, this is a game that has been out for almost two years. Uh, the Japanese version and uh, the Google version just got released uh, to go reimburse uh, uh, to rebirth. Um, I haven't played Rebirth much at all, but based off of what I see, it's literally copy and paste, but of course, the global version is like six, seven months behind the actual uh, JP version. But uh, in terms of the rates, for me, they've been great. Now, talking about the Black Reaper Konaki banner, uh, that was an amazing banner. It was a five-step banner, and the featured card started out at a 2% rate. And with every single multi you did, it increased by an additional 2% for that main featured card. So for example, the first step was 2%, second step was 4%, third step was actually a 50% rate for the card itself or a 50% rate for other S uh, SSR. So, and then the fourth multi was actually uh, 8% and then the fifth multi was guaranteed. Damn, that does that, sound good. <laughs> bro, that, that is insane. So not only do you have increased rates as you go along, but the third step is literally a 50% chance for that specific card or any other SSR. Either way, you're guaranteed an SSR on a third step. And then the fifth step is literally guaranteed the card. So for me, um, within the five rotations, I pull, I think it's four Connor keys. Four. And bro, like that, that's insane. Uh, because he's currently, I think he's like the second best card in the game. And for them to give him such a good rate with only having to do five steps, which the five steps only cost, I think 220 gems, which is nothing. Uh, Bro, I, I that was like an amazing banner. Um, shiny wheel on it, I wheeled on it. I saw other people who play Toka Ghoul that are in the YouTube community, uh, wheel on that banner as well. And a lot of people have 100% max ability Kana keys. So I feel like that's a game that does rate so well. Like, you have a banner, uh, increased rates as you go along with the steps, and you know, it's only five steps guaranteed fifth step. So that's like, that's why I'm more gravitating toward Tokyo Ghoul. The rates are so good. They give you quite a bit of gems. So you don't have to really wheel on the game like in terms of buying the gems. You can uh, just grind the free-to-play gems. So I love Tokyo Ghoul. But Blazing now has just... They've kind of digressed in terms of obtaining the card easier because they're now introducing these LR rates on regular feature uh, banner units. So that's why a lot of people are like, you know, Blazing dying. I don't want to play Blazing anymore. I don't know, bro, but I mean, uh, they're supposed to have this, like, uh, 20 million download celebration coming up, so hopefully with that, they actually fix that issue, and hopefully they reintroduce the increased rates to make things wrong, but I don't know what to see about that, but, yeah. Yeah, Blazing, they've just made it so your typical multi is just very, very bad. Exactly, and there's one thing about Blazing that I know everyone hates. Is, I mean, I, I, I uh, remember Afro made a video, uh, I think it was like hashtag make Blazing great again, uh, he mentioned this. So in Blazing, they have a thing where they have awakened four stars, which are considered five stars, but they're not five stars. They're awakened four stars. And Dokken actually did this for the first, I think, year and a half to where they had these banners, right? And uh, oh, it was specific SR type banners. Yeah, bro. Mm. These specific type banners. Uh, you would summon on the banner and you have like a UR cell, but it's not a UR, it's just Z awakened cell. You would have an SSR kid trunks but it's just the str sr trunks as the awaken so you would summon on the banner oh my god screen break whatever whatever but it's an awaken sr so a lot of people complain at banner was like yeah we gotta get rid of this so dokkan actually fixed that same issue but blazing still has that to where they have these fake goals in the banner so you can pull a goal like let's say you have a multi uh four goals oh my god wow this is awesome four fakes <laughs> you're pissed off you didn't pull anything <laughs> and that's so consistent and i see that uh more often than now uh, more, more often now than any other time in uh you know blazing history with people pulling more fake goals than actual goals so 
I feel like they've now increased the rate of pulling fake goals above actual goals. With one hundred percent, they definitely, yeah. absolutely increased it during the two-year anniversary. Yeah, and like yeah. The, the Naruto yeah. and Sasuke banner for sure. And that's they were pushed that, way up. That's something also like the longer the lifespan of a game, the more units that you're going to have in the game as well. So they're always going to add those lesser units into like into the game to add more to the pool. So. You know, of course, two years down the road, you're going to have more of those fake four, uh, four, fake five stars that will pop up, which yeah. I'm not going to lie is one of the things that got me away from Blazing because I, I couldn't stand that. The thing about Blazing that they haven't introduced new sunnable four stars since the game started. They, they haven't introduced any new four stars like at all. The only four stars we now have is free to play ones you can farm. But in terms of summonable four stars, like, like with Blazing, oh, so they you just know, you... straight up increase the rates for them. Yeah, yeah. Like so, so with Blazing, like, you, you know how Dokkan gives SRs, like you know, um, like new SRs you can summon uh, on banners. Blazing oh, doesn't do that. Yeah. They they haven't introduced brand new four star to summon since the inception of the game. So we literally have the same amount of four stars that we've had since the beginning, but we have like four, five, ten times more actual goals that are five stars and banners, but you're still pulling more fakes than actual goals. It, the ratio is off. It doesn't, that doesn't make sense to me. So I don't know. I, I don't know how they, I don't know how that's obviously even a thing, but uh, obviously they're increasing the rates for the actual fakes and uh, versus the actual real goals. Why? Uh, fucking band. I, I don't know. I mean, a but, lot of um... times it's a give and take type of deal. So like in in Blazing, for example, you have step up. So they kind of have to or they don't have to, but they choose to do something to mess with the rates in that in that instance to make you go all the way to that step where you're guaranteed whatever unit. Mm -hmm. You know, and that that takes us back to the entire point of this video where like the practices that they're implementing into their games it's it's not good it's really not and it's it's all across it's not all across the board of all bandai games but a good deal of their mobile games are like this and yeah i i like at, for me i see it and i'm like bro i don't it's hard to support a game where it's like spend the money because this game is fantastic i really can't do that if you know if they're messing with rates and stuff like that makes it that much harder like morally i guess in my opinion you know everybody Bandit doesn't everybody can do... doesn't care about morals bro. i, I know i mean at the end of the day everybody does what they want with their money you know yep. like i can't force anybody to not spend their money on something that's not my choice that's their choice as a person mm -hmm. you know i can just give my opinion on something and you know Again, like seeing seeing Truth go seven k deep into a banner. I've gone three k deep into Dokkan banners before and only get one copy of a unit. And I'm like, yeah, bro. Like, I, I like. I think my worst was um, like when LR Gohan first dropped. I think it went six k deep and I didn't even pull him. That's the first time he dropped. So for me, my yeah. my white buffalo or white whale or whatever you want to call it was uh, Super Saiyan three Angel Goku, the tech one. I went three k mm. and only pulled one. So I was like, <laughs> after that, I was like, bro, what am I doing? Yeah. So, you know, I, and we can we can drag this video out long. It's already long. We could drag this video out as long as freaking we want because this is a topic we can continuously talk about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, there's. I mean, we we haven't mentioned like Bleach, Brave Soul, which that's not a band that game, but it's nah, popular. I mean, and Bleach is, uh, like, Bleach is yeah. all right. Bleach is not too bad because they have step ups. The rates aren't too terrible. Bleach is um, good because they do give you your gems back for maxing out units they or something do. like that, right? They do. They yeah, give that's, you so yeah. much currency, it's crazy. Mm. Yeah, that's one thing I'm definitely going to say. Uh, you know, I, I, so I think in terms of who's the second best like free to play um, game that gives you the amount of gems next to Blazing, I'll say it's Bleach. Because, you know, like, uh, same thing what you would say. Uh, like, I mean, I'll, bro, like, I mean, bro, I've been playing Bleach uh, quite a bit and. Uh, like what you say, so once you max out cars, like, you know, let's say you max out two star to three star, three star, four star, four star, four, like whatever, you'll get gems every single time you cap out a card. That's a lot of gems. So you can just literally pull a bunch of shit units, but cap all them out to their max rarity and get all your gems back. So it's like doing free multis. Yeah, yeah, but you got to play Star Ocean. 
I, 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 I don't play that game, right? Star, Star I, I don't Ocean, have a pin in that game. Star Ocean, every every time a banner drops, so there's usually two weeks in between the banners, and in, in that two weeks' time, you can farm you can farm up about 20k gems, which is four multis in that game. Not to mention, every day they give you one free single summon every single day, and they give you free tickets to pull the five-star units like, like crazy. They just give you shit. Like, you don't have to spend money. I haven't spent money in that game since it first came out and wow. and i can just do my summons and if i get the unit cool if i don't get the unit okay then i just save up for the next banner so i mean there's there's a lot of games that are really good free to play games um unfortunately we don't play the majority of them <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, we have we have uh gambling issues guys <laughs> yeah so <laughs> so i don't uh, truth do you want to continue the conversation on your channel I mean, yeah, we could certainly uh, continue it at some point. I'm done. All right, all right. Uh, I think that's that uh, muscle. That's up to you. It's your video, so you want to end yeah, guys. Here? So um, yeah. So uh, I guess we're probably gonna come back to the part two. Uh, this video is like what 25 minutes long. Quite a lot, quite long already. So, uh, but yeah, probably gonna come back uh, like a uh, kind of extension because there's certain other games we could dive into. We can talk more about gambling. We can talk about the whole Belgium situation. So there's more we can dive into, but. I think this is a good yeah, point. Yeah, we didn't even get into that. No, at all. we didn't. That's, we didn't, that's, we didn't even. that's why I'm we didn't asking. Even talk about that. That's why I'm asking if you want to cover that on your on your channel, Truth. We could do that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. We, that, we, that, we can get into it some more. I had fun. All right. Yeah, it's that could good be to talk about because it's good. It's good for people to know, like, you know, like any what these games are very easily accessible because they're free to play, right? But like it's designed in a way to get you to spend. So you mm -hmm. got to be very cautious when you're playing these uh, free to play games like this. Yep. And Facts. this has been your public service announcement. The more you know. <laughs> Insert right here. You got to put that more you know symbol. <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely edit that in. Uh, anyways, guys. So hope you enjoy the topic. Shout out to the home. Shout out to the promotion. Link down below to the channel. Go in and support these guys. Uh, be looking at part two. I don't know when it's going to be recorded. I don't know when it's going to be dropping, but probably going to be in Truth's channel. And uh, we'll continue the conversation over there. So thank you all for watching. Like, share, comment down below. If not subscribe to the boy and Goshen and Truth. Make it a thing. Sub to all three of us, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Later.